Oftentimes, I think I can take for granted how amazing RVs are, how self-contained they can be, the, the resources that you can take with you between water, propane, electricity, and be able to generate electricity with, with uh, solar panels. And these things are actually pretty phenomenal. So today, we're actually gonna be looking at the propane system, the things you need to know and should know about your propane system in the RV. How's it going? Welcome to another All About RVs. I'm Jared Gillis. We're doing another video in the newbie series talking about propane today. There's a, there's a lot of things that your propane, the lo a lot of functions that your propane can have in your RV and your rig. You have uh, everything from refrigeration to cooking to heating to hot water to barbecues. Um, there's a lot of things that we rely on our, our propane to do. So uh, let's begin with the, the source of the propane, looking at our, our tanks. Uh, here we have two 30 pound propane tanks on our, our RV. Our propane tanks are a little bit older, so once they pass that 10 year mark from the manufacture date, we had to take them to a, a propane place to have them recertified. Otherwise, we couldn't even get them filled. These tanks are slightly bigger than what you would find on like, like a normal barbecue. Your normal barbecue is gonna be the, the 20 pound tanks. Um, so I know it's hard to tell because I don't have it right next to it, but this is a, a 20 pound tank and it usually holds just under five gallons. Uh, these 30 pound tanks, uh, they, they hold typically close to, to seven gallons and that's what we have on here. So um, about 14 gallons is what we have. I know they do them by poundage and then you buy it by the gallon, but uh, that's typically what you're going to get for your propane tanks. Now, if you're in a class A or a, a class C, your, your tank is actually gonna be mounted to your rig. So that could go one of two ways. If you like to be able to pull out your, your tanks and not have to move your entire rig to go get propane, um, you know, fifth wheels and travel trailers, that's usually the way those work. Uh, but the class A's and the class C's, you would have to move your whole rig, but you don't have to lift anything heavy. So you just pull up, they fill up your propane and you're good to go. So if you're looking for a rig, that might play into uh, some of the, the reasons why you might decide to get the rig that you want to get. I nearly forgot my favorite way that we filled up propane not that long ago. This RV park, they would they would come around and if you had your propane tank sitting out on the edge of your site, they would pick it up, fill it up, and drop it off right at your front door. <laughs> that was being spoiled. I'll admit it. It's also a good idea to know how much propane you have in your tanks. And um, we've done a video on this about how to monitor the propane in your tanks, but I'll put a link in the description to some of the, the ways that we've liked and the, the gauges and um, even the, this tank check here. Uh, it's a device that you put on there and it'll even tell you on your app. Uh, but that's how we know how much propane we have in here. The, the Class A's and the Class C's are usually going to have uh, some kind of a gauge already on their rig. So they don't necessarily need to worry about that. But that covers the, the storage of how you store propane in these cylinders and these tanks. Uh, but let's talk about distribution because uh, this supply needs to now get to the appliances we have in the RV. And that begins with the pressure regulator. This one here is a two-stage auto changeover pressure regulator. That means it's made for two tanks. Uh, the, the two stages is to give you a more consistent flow of propane, but the auto changeover, if this first tank empties, it'll automatically switch over to the second tank. But I can manually switch it over. So if I wanna pull this front tank, I manually switch it over to the second tank. Now I can pull the first tank, go fill it up again if I wanted to, and drop it back in here. So uh, it'll auto change over or you can manually do it. We've had to swap out our pressure regulator a couple of times actually. Uh, once was because it was leaking. Propane leaks are never good. And uh, the other one, it wasn't providing enough propane to the appliances to actually uh, work properly. So uh, we swapped out to this one and everything's been great. They're really not that difficult to change out. It's pretty simple. So that finishes up this area. Let's go talk about the appliances. This is actually the back side of our appliances. That's the heater. This is our water heater. Um, this one might look a little different than yours. Ours is a tankless. Uh, this is the back side of the fridge. I know it's crazy to think that you can use a, a heat source like propane to cool a refrigerator. 
but it's actually like an uh, ammonia hydrogen based chemical reaction using that heat that absorbs the heat from the inside of your fridge, which then once you absorb the heat out, it's cool. But that's a different topic for another day. But these you want to make sure don't get plugged like the, these ports. Uh, you don't want them. That's where the exhaust is coming out. So you don't want bugs making homes in them. You don't want them getting covered or clogged or something like that. So you can put screens on the outside of these to make sure that doesn't happen. That'll do it for here. Let's head inside. Here's our range in our RV. It, it works pretty good. They make all different kinds now. I mean, there's some really nice ones, basic ones, small ones, large ones, whatever. Um, this isn't a Dr. Seuss book, but um, this range, you know, your typical three burner cooktop. Um, you have your oven down below. Quick tip on the oven, something that, that Chris learned, is if you raise this rack here up to the top level, it gives you more distance from the flame and you don't burn things as easily. So that's just a quick tip on the oven and cooking in an RV, but uh, this uses propane for us. We have the furnace, the heater right down below that, and it works automatically off of the thermostat. Over here above our thermostat is our carbon monoxide alarm. Now, anytime you're in a confined space and you're using propane or something like that, there, there could be a risk for carbon monoxide. So you wanna make sure you have the alarm and that it's functioning properly. This down here is your uh, propane gas alarm uh, because if the gas is leaking, it's gonna settle low. It's gonna be near the floor. So uh, this guy will go off if you have a propane leak in your RV. It's gonna protect you from that. The last appliance we are going to look at today is the refrigerator. Ours is a two-way, so it can operate off of like shore power where you plug in the RV or it can run off of the propane. Ours isn't the 12, where it can run off the 12 volt. It's not a three-way, um, so we can, easily switch it to run off of propane just by pressing that. It removes it from the electrical and puts it onto the propane. Each one's a little bit different how uh, you do that, but usually it's just a real simple uh, press of the button to, to get it going on which, whichever you would like, the electric or the propane. So that brings up the topic of should you turn off your propane or should you leave your propane on when you drive so you can keep your fridge on? Now, it's actually a pretty controversial subject and people get very adamant about it. Uh, us and what we do and what we recommend is we turn off our propane. Uh, it just helps alleviate any potential threat or danger uh, with propane in those lines if we were to get in an accident or worst case scenario. But that's a choice that you have to make whether you're willing to take the risk of having the propane on and keeping the, the fridge on or just turning it all off. So when we travel six to eight hours, even in, in hot weather, our fridge will only lose four to five degrees as we travel um, over that period of time, over eight hours, six hours. Uh, so it's really not that big of a deal and we get it turned right on um, as soon as we get to wherever we're going. Well, that's gonna do it for our topic of propane today. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video and if we don't see you on the road, we will see you next time. Smile, smile, smile.